In this lesson, we're going to talk about the vertex form of the parabola, which is actually the best form of the equation for many reasons, primarily graphing. And we're going to think about where the vertex form comes from, and it really comes from transformations of a basic parabola y equals ax squared. And remember, the a tells us the relative width relative to the parent of y equals 1x squared, and if the vertex is a maximum or a minimum, which means it's you know happy face or frowny face. Now, translating something vertically, which means to move it up or down, I have to remember from the very beginning of the year when we talked about transformations, I have to add something to the end, or subtract something if I want to move it down. And I want to look at what happens to the vertex. So in this case, if I just translate it vertically only, up or down, the vertex is now located at 0, comma k. Right? And remember, a horizontal translation, meaning shifting left or right, inside the parentheses I have to take away something from the x to change where the 0 is going to be. And so now in this case, my vertex is located at h, comma 0. And that's a translation left or right. So if I have some random parabola where its vertex is located at h comma k, then I have to shift it uh, horizontally h and vertically k. And so I do both the horizontal shifting and the vertical shifting to get what we call vertex form, which is y equals a, open parentheses, x minus h, close parentheses squared, plus k, or Sometimes you'll see it as y minus k equals a times x minus h quantity squared. Both of them work. This is, of course, calculator ready, meaning you can just type it into y equals on your calculator. And this one is very consistent that it's x minus h and y minus k so that you don't get the signs confused. And that's all vertex form really is. It's just taking y equals ax squared and moving it around the plane. Now to recap what you need for graphing, remember three points for a parabola, two points for a line. We plot the axis of symmetry, we have to plot the vertex, and when you're given vertex form, this is all inside the equation. There's no calculation necessary, unlike standard form. Now you do have to plot the x and y intercepts if possible, and this is the thing you have to calculate. If you have standard form, it just gives you the y intercept. Vertex form doesn't give you that, so you have to do a little bit of calculation. Remember, if these three things don't give you three points, you might have to find another one or two if these are all the same. And then, of course, you want to sketch the curve, add any arrows and labels. Now it's time for us to look at this example and pick out whatever information we can get from it. Now remember that this thing here inside the parentheses is going to give us our axis of symmetry because it is the x value of the vertex. And remember it was x minus h gave you h comma something, right? And so it's x minus 4, which means in this case h equals 4. And so, therefore, our axis of symmetry has to be at x equals 4. It's a vertical line at 4. And then our vertex happens at h comma k, and I have h is 4. And then remember, this form had y minus k, and so then my k value is 5. So my vertex is located at 4 comma 5. And so if I think about what I have for my parabola, I have x equals 4 as my axis of symmetry. And over here at 4 comma 5, I have my vertex. Now I need another point. And in this case, I'm going to find the y-intercept. And I can find the y-intercept because x is equal to 0 at the y-intercept. So I have y minus 5 equals negative 2 times 0 minus 4 squared. 
and then I just have to solve this equation So a few reminders when solving this equation, uh, remember that's negative 4 in parentheses squared, which yields a positive 16. And then when I simplify it all the way down, I get y equals negative 27. So way down here at uh, negative 27, I have a second point. And then, of course, I can use the line of symmetry. And over here off the page at 8 comma negative 27, I have the reflection of the y-intercept and a third point. Now for a parabola like this you definitely want to find more than three points or this is going to be a really skinny v-looking parabola and they are not supposed to look like these. So you should find another point maybe by picking you know either x equals 1 or x equals 2 or x equals 3 and plugging that into this equation into this equation right here to find some more points because for this one, you definitely want more than three points. Now, of course, you can find the x-intercepts, but it's a lot harder to find the x-intercepts. You have to set y equal to zero and then solve this equation, which involves square rooting and then ugliness. So it's much easier, in this case, just to figure out either what x, what y is at x equals 1 or x equals 2 or x equals 3, or all of them, since you have a calculator handy that will find those points really quickly for you. Now what we really want to be able to do is easily convert between the various forms. Because standard form gives us the y-intercept and the vertex form gives us, well, the vertex. And so if I want to convert from vertex form to standard form, all you have to do is simplify. So if I have the example y equals 2 times x minus 3 quantity squared, plus 5, then to get this thing into standard form, I have to multiply out x minus 3 quantity squared, which remember you have to use Leo B to do that. So I get x squared, or FOIL, you can use FOIL too, uh, x squared minus 6x plus 9 plus 5, and then you distribute, you get 2x squared minus 12x plus 18 plus 5, which gives you 2x squared minus 12x plus 23. And so then this gives me standard form, and then I can just find the y-intercept, and I have the vertex, and yay. And this conversion is actually a pretty easy conversion if you remember how to use Leo B or FOIL, right? You just have to multiply it out and distribute and then combine like terms, and you have your standard form equation. Now converting from standard form to vertex, meaning if I give you y equals 2x squared minus 12x plus 23, and I wanted you to find this version, well you'd have to basically do these steps backwards, and that process is called completing the square. And in order to complete the square, you have to know about this thing called factoring. So I'm not actually going to do an example of converting standard form to vertex right now. We're going to do that a little bit later after I teach you how to factor. And now for your check, I want you to do four things, four things to this equation. Y equals one third times the quantity X plus two squared minus four. I want you to find the equation for the axis of symmetry. I want you to state the coordinates of the vertex. I want you to find the y-intercept. And then I want you to convert it to standard form.